Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to solve quasi-linear partial differential equations using the method of characteristics. Now in previous videos, we've talked about the semi-linear case, and we've uh, also discussed why the method works. Now for the quasi-linear case, the, um, the, the equation is more complicated and therefore extra care needs to be uh, taken and um, the method is slightly more challenging to apply uh, than in the semi-linear case. So, here is uh, a first order semi-linear PDE. You can see the coefficients of the partial derivatives may depend on u. So for semi-linear problems, the u doesn't appear there, but it does appear over here. Okay, and like I said, the method of characteristics can be applied to this kind of situation in, in a similar method uh, as the semi-linear case. Okay, so what we do is we form these kinds of differential type equations. Now by this, I just mean the following. So this is a slightly more compact form. Okay. And you try to form two independent solutions to these problems by, for example, combining them in some way. If we can find these two Im possibly implicit type solutions, C1 and C2 are constants here, then the general solution to our quasi-linear PDE is the following. So here, big F is an arbitrary function, uh, differentiable function. And essentially you take your h and you take your g and you just form a, a functional relationship between them using this big F. Okay, so how does it all work? And uh, of course the best way to see how it works is to do a problem. So let's do a, a specific problem. We're going to solve the following reasonably simple but quasi-linear PDE. Phi is just a function of x here. So you can see in this context, if we just compare this with this, the right hand side is, is identically equal to zero, so it's a homogeneous problem. Your a would be u, your b would be positive one, and your f would be just the zero function. Okay, so First of all, let's write down this um, uh, system here with, the, with our particular A, B, and F. Ah, before I get to that though, why is this an interesting problem? This is a quasi-linear um, PDE known as Berger's equation, and it comes from a fluid mechanics. Okay, so. Um, uh, this is, this is uh, an interesting problem which relates back to modelling and this particular, uh, having the homogeneous right hand side, um, it's called an um, inviscous flow. Okay, um, but let's just talk about how we solve the problem. Okay, so let's consider our uh, differential forms. That's an F here. Okay, so here we're going to have dx over u equals dy over positive 1 equals du over 0. Now, this is a bit naughty here. You might think, oh, you're dividing by 0. But actually what's happening uh, here is that basically from here, du dt is just 0. Okay, so from this uh, uh, part over here, we can immediately uh, conclude that u 
is just a constant because th think of this as du dt equals zero. Okay. So let's call the constant say c1. Okay, let's combine these differentials to form an ODE. So let's um, combine them to be, say, dx over dy equals u. Now you may think, well, how do I solve that? I don't know what u is. But you know what, from up here, u is a constant. Okay? So if we integrate here now, x is just going to be c1y plus another constant of integration, say c2. Okay, so we have this expression and this expression. Now I can sort of go back now and put u, u in here. And what I'm going to do is isolate that c2. Okay, because remember we're looking for functions like this where the where the constants are isolated. Okay. So if I take this to the other side, I will get the following. Okay. So now, let's. Uh, so, so essentially, you know, one of these would be our h, and one of these would be our j. Let's just combine them through some arbitrary but differentiable function. Okay, so combine to form the following. So, say. Um, C1 equals F of C2, say. Let me get this. Okay, so we're almost finished the problem now, but we haven't actually introduced the initial condition yet. Okay. Okay, so let's now, you can think of this as the general implicit solution to Berger's equation. Okay, so now let's refine this, try to find big F by using the initial condition. Okay, so, so this is known as initial condition or Cauchy data. So IC means initial condition. Okay, so uh, it's phi of x. Now phi isn't given, but it, just think of it as some function of x. If I go in here and I replace y with 0, I'll get x minus 0, which is just this. So if we compare these two, we know that the function big F is just the phi function. Okay. Thus, the solution to our Cauchy problem, okay, talk about a Cauchy problem is just a PDE and some sort of initial condition associated with Berger's equation, okay, the homogeneous form is the following. Okay, so it's this with big F replaced by this phi. Okay, and it's in the implicit form here. Okay, now if you want to check to see that this really does 
satisfy the PDE and this you can differentiate it using the chain rule or implicit differentiation and show that this holds and then check the, the Cauchy data or the initial condition. Um, now I've talked about why the method works for the semilinear case in other videos and it's similar for the quasi-linear case. Sometimes uh, it's, it's actually extremely hard to solve these problems. What you want to do is come up with h functions h and j whose derivatives, say with respect to t, are zero. You can play around with these uh, this differential, uh, dif differential type setting and come up with big H and J such that the derivative with respect to T is zero. That'll be the subject of other videos. I hope you can join me for those and um, we'll look at some more quasi-linear problems in those presentations.